Does your baby's head constantly tilt like this? Well, this could potentially be torticollis. Now, I have six different things that can potentially be causing this to your baby. And this could be for newborn babies or babies in general, because there are lots of issues that can come with just this head tilt. Let's check it out. I'm Adriana. I'm a pediatric occupational therapist of 13 years, and I have two little ones under the age of three. And trust me, I have definitely been seeing this particular diagnosis or issue, which is called torticollis. Now, before I dig in, I'm going to go ahead and break it down. What in the world is torticollis? Why should we even care about this head tilt? And third of all, six different things that could potentially be causing this torticollis. Now, torticollis is basically when the baby's head is tilted and turned off to the side. And when it comes to torticollis, there's a particular muscle that is super tight and it is called the sternocleidomastoid muscle. It's definitely a tongue tie. <laughs> But this particular muscle can be shortened and I should say tightened as well too. And they're basically turning off to the side. When this tends to happen, it can also potentially or more than likely get a flat head, which is called plagiocephaly. Now, plagiocephaly is basically flatness on one side of the head. Now, Little ones who tend to tilt to one particular side sometimes can also have hip dysplasia. So check out this video up here on my video when it comes to what is hip dysplasia and how to prevent it or developmental or acquired hip dysplasia. But other than that, you know, it, it, sometimes it can go hand in hand. It's not super duper common and it's not always the case, but it can happen. Now let's talk about why should we care so much about torticollis or I should say the head tilt. Sometimes when there's families that mention, you know, oh, who cares? It's totally fine. Uh, it's not going to affect their development at all whatsoever. They'll grow out of it. Well, technically, usually if left untreated, it's probably not a good idea not to seek help as soon as possible because it can lead to issues. And there's many issues that I could explain up here in this video, but just to name a few, what happens and why should we care about it is because little ones end up having tracking issues. If they're constantly tracking to one particular side, they're also going to be neglecting one side of the body. Another issue too is it can cause breastfeeding issues if they're having tightness and issues being unable to turn the head or feeling very uncomfortable. They're going to prefer one breast over the other and also latching issues as well too. Last but not least also is a cause of plagiocephaly, which is flattening of the head. So if you think of a ball that is flat on one side or is somewhat flat and you somewhat roll it and it basically stays in that one particular position. And when it happens is that it just it has a hard time rolling, right? Same thing with rolling the head off to the sides to be able to track, to be able to roll. And rolling leads to crawling and crawling leads to walking. So it's basically more so of also a domino effect. So these are very few things just to name a few of why we should care. And that's why I wanted to mention it in this video because sometimes we lose track um, or sometimes we end up forgetting the, it, the main reasons why we should definitely be caring about this. So like I said, check out the video up there, as I mentioned before, so you can uh, learn a little bit more about why, how it affects development overall. So now let's talk about the six different ways or six different things that can potentially be causing the torticollis in your baby. Number one, and this is obviously very well known, is in utero position. So when you have a baby that is either breached or a very big baby in a very small uterus, or you have a really small uterus as it is, or sometimes the baby, you know, ends up uh, positioning themselves and maintaining themselves in this one particular position where they start getting tightness in the muscle in utero when you're pregnant. So basically when the baby is breached, obviously they're at higher chances of having the hip dysplasia. 
And then also higher chances of also having that neck tightening and neck issues because they're positioned in a very different way in utero. So when they end up coming out or when they end up being born, they already have this particular tightness in the muscle, which is typically the torticollis. And this is where uh, we need to start definitely talking to your pediatrician to be able to get a referral to physical therapy or occupational therapy to be able to intervene a lot sooner and faster in order for them not to have issues later on, as I've mentioned uh, at the very beginning of this video. Another issue that can also happen that can also cause a torticollis is reflux. Reflux obviously is when the baby is spitting up in case there's some people that don't know what reflux is. So check out this video up there. Uh, what is reflux? What causes reflux and what to do about it? I have several videos on that. But when it comes to reflux, babies are arching back. And when they're arching back, they get tight. So when they're getting super duper tight, they end up tilting off, sometimes off to the right or off to the left side. Typically, it's off to the right. And when they're constantly arching over and over and over again, and you know, babies end up feeding seven to eight times a day and they have to eat to be able to survive, right? But when they, they have that, even that silent reflux, they start arching back. So overall body tightness and neck tightness can go hand in hand with the torticollis. So that definitely needs to be also treated or at least reduced to be able to reduce that tightness, the overall body tightness. All right, so number three is definitely the eyes. The eyes is a, definitely a, a huge thing that can cause the torticollis. So when you end up having a little one that has double vision or they have some sort of palsy in the eye, the ocular nerve, and which I have had a client that I actually was able to catch because they're like, well, he's constantly had this constant head tilt since he was born and we never really caught it until he was the age of three and then I was the one that ended up doing a couple of you know different activities and that kind of thing and stretches but I was like you know I feel like there's more issues that are you know affecting this child so we when we were just doing a really spinning activity he ended up having um, nystagmus but there was one eye that did not move at all whatsoever so i sent him over to the neurologist and i said this is just not within normal limits you know and i was like let's just go to the ophthalmologist and then also let's go to the neurologist as well too just to double check and see the nerves and lo and behold baby and our little one i should say the toddler ended up having palsy and uh, in the eye so obviously he needed operation and that was the only way that he was able to be treated for the torticollis despite all the therapy that he ended up getting when he was about uh, five months old or so it just never got better because we never got to the root of the issue so the eyes are very important and it's very important to check them as well too to be able to cross our T's and dot our eyes to make sure that we are making sure that we're not missing anything because sometimes just stretches alone will not do much if we're not getting to the root of the issue. Number four is traumatic birth. When the baby was either stuck in the vaginal canal, when they were stuck, when they were trying to pull the baby out, and when you're obviously pulling the baby from the head or the neck, and it can cause herbs palsy, or it can also cause brachial plexus injury. And obviously, one of the two, because uh, we have seen those two diagnoses over at our hospital, and obviously it needs to be treated 100% with not moving the the limb, making sure that we're protecting at the very beginning, so on and so forth. That's just like a whole nother video within itself. But when you're having a traumatic birth, even if it's not the pulling of the neck or the, the shoulders or anything like that, sometimes when they have like a really, even like a really quick birth or even through a C-section itself, um, the babies sometimes come out really tight. And that's when we end up seeing a lot of body tightness. When there's a lot of uh, tightness and discomfort and that kind of thing, you could obviously end up seeing them either arching back or just like really, really scrunched up. 
and um it's that's that's when you know massage kicks in that's where we need to start um, implementing different types of activities to be able to loosen up that body to be able to calm the system down and the muscles down to be able to help out that little one so they're not preferring one particular side and to be able to relax more of the muscles overall especially the neck muscles now number five it can be somewhat controversial for many other therapists, but this is something that I'm a true believer in. And I truly believe in this 100%. And this is completely new out in the community. So hear me out on this. It's basically the, a tongue tie. It's a tight frenulum, tight muscles around the mouth. I myself have a tongue tie myself, but typically people who have tight frenulums around the mouth, we need to start remembering and start understanding the anatomy and basically how the body works. And when we have a tight frenulum, the fascia of the tongue all the way down to the toes, it, this is all connected. When the baby is forming as a fetus in utero, that is exactly what happens is that's how it, it ends up developing. It's the fascia that ends up developing in utero as a fetus. And that's why it's so interconnected the body is so interconnected and that's why we need to understand that even with a tongue tie with i it's not even considered a tongue tie but it's more so a tight frenulum depending on if it's anterior posterior how tight the frenulum is can also affect your baby in terms of torticollis again it's everything is interconnected and we need to make sure that we are stretching not only the system here it's not only stretching the neck and it's not also just positional but it's also even stretching the muscles around the mouth and in the mouth to be able to double check and see if you know that is also the root of, of the cause or it could be multiple different things right you can have so for example you could have a tight frenulum with reflux and also for example a traumatic birth so all these different things can totally have or cause, you know, the torticollis. And then that's where we kind of as therapists, it's very important to just little by little start chopping away what is the main cause, what's the issue. If it's three different issues, then let's go ahead and work on these these things, right? As as the baby gets into therapy. And lastly, there are also some medications that can also cause the torticollis or even viral resp upper respiratory infections as well too. That's more medical based, more on that medical um, side of things. So just something to take a look at, but that's more of acquired torticollis. So basically when um, it actually happens after the baby's born and it's just more of an acute onset that just kind of happened due to these illnesses, just, you know, throwing that out there just so you guys are aware of it as well too. Hopefully this video was very helpful for you guys. So you guys are somewhat aware of all these different causes or all these different issues that can potentially be affecting your little one when it comes to torticollis. Hopefully this video was super helpful. Again, I'm Adriana. Subscribe and like and also share this video with others so you guys can share the knowledge. All right. Thanks so much. Have a good day. Bye bye.